guys in the dark. This is a story that I do not often tell. I promise, sincerely, that this has me scared for life. And although I have looked into psychology and explanations for what I have heard, and natural explanations for what has happened, they remain unsatisfactory. When I was a child, I was scared of the dark. I swore to my mother that I had heard voices in it. They were not evil, but they were not familiar, and so they had scared me. It was not common in the middle of the night for me to wake up and hear whispers, as I would call them, asking my mom. She figured that they were just bumps in the night, and typical kid nightmare material. I tried often to explain to her that it was more than just that, but they sounded different from one another, the way people's voices do. On some nights, I would get so scared from these whispers that I would sleep in my mom's bed with her. It was an added bonus that the bathroom was directly outside of her bedroom door for my late night tinkles. I should add at this point that when walking into the hall to go into the bathroom, you look directly down the stairs that would lead you into the living room on the first floor. As my mom's bedroom was on the second floor, on one such night, around Christmas time, I woke up and felt the need to relieve myself. I walked out from the door, distinctly heard the phrase, Look! And to my astonishment, a red light, almost like a spotlight, was cast upon the wall on the very bottom of the stairs. The light had no other source. It was all by itself, and I was transfixed by it. Being a little kid, and it only being a few days from Christmas, I knew what this light was. It was Santa. How else could he have gotten into my house to know I was being a good boy? I was so excited. I began walking down the stairs to go greet him, picking up my pace after the second step, as it began to creep off the wall and fade into the darkness in the living room. That's when I heard him, a very strong, masculine voice, different from the first. Not at all like my father's. Not to say that he isn't masculine, it's just distinctly different. It said, stop, right now. Go back up those stairs. I listened. I turned around. And what happened next? I'm not sure that I would believe if someone else had told me this very same story. After reaching the top of the stairs, I heard a very loud crash that sent me running back to my mother's bed, where I jumped straight under the covers and stayed there the whole night. When we had awoke the very next morning, the poinsettia lights, which are little Christmas flower lights that glowed red, my mother had put up on the railing down the stairs were pulled straight down to the bottom of the stairs. Some were broken from what seemed like a very forceful tear laying in a single pile. The dry sink in my living room had fallen from the wall. My mother could not explain it. My father was worried that he had been a victim of some home invasion. My sister was crying. There was nothing missing, though. Nobody had broken in. There did not seem to be any reason that this had happened. And then I saw it. And I kept quiet about it, because I was so afraid that I could not force words out of my mouth. There on the edge of the wooden dry sink, which had been facing up, were three indentations where the finish on the wood had been worn, almost as if in a forceful grip. Something down there had grabbed it and then threw it down. That's what the bang was. I was mortified. After that day, I never heard a single voice again. I do not like to imagine what was waiting downstairs for me that very night, if it was anything at all. But I can tell you that the reality was that something was physically acted upon, two things in my house near the bottom of that stairwell. After this, I had never heard another voice or whisper again, which is sad, because in some ways I would have liked to think that the man, masculine energy by the way, that had stopped me from going down these stairs. This happened when I was seven. I'm twenty years old now, and because of this incident, I'm still afraid of the dark, especially shadowy stairwells. My house was built in 1904. It was a single-family home, wood frame setting on a concrete block foundation. I've been living there for about 12 years. All of the weird things that my siblings and me have seen or heard in this house. This event happens to be my favorite. This happened to my brother. About 10 years ago, my brother and his best friends had started a garage band playing mostly Spanish rock. Alternative music, but in Spanish. His friends would only get together on Sunday afternoons. They would practice until the early evening, and they would usually call it quits around 8 p.m. This was the time that I usually showed up, and then I went to bed, because I worked the graveyard shift. 
This happened in late fall, so the days were getting shorter. They had just finished a long session when they decided to head to someone else's home. My brother handed his car keys to his buddy so that they could load up the equipment. Everyone had filed out of the basement, but the tricky part was that they needed to walk all the way to the back of the basement, up the back of the stairs, through the kitchen doorway, and down the hallway into the living room, and out into the front porch. Everyone was outside, sitting in my brother's truck, waiting for him. My brother had been walking back upstairs when he remembered that he had left his pancakes in a to-go container sitting on a speaker in the basement. He made the decision to go back for them. Now the basement is not clean, with full sight lines. There had been partitions made, and the boiler and main heating unit are right smack in the middle. So after my brother walks back, he's about to retrieve his food container. When out of the corner of his eye, he sees it. It is a shadowy figure right in his peripheral vision. This feeling of dread and uneasiness washes over my brother. We had been taught that if you are in a presence of a spirit or ghost, and you felt a bad vibe, to say a quick prayer or to just cuss at it. My brother chose the latter. He basically told it, Hey, fuck you. I don't have time for this shit. My brother started to walk to the back of the basement and briskly up the stairs, closing the door and turning off the lights as he was walking out. The last light switch is on the opposite side of the front door. Luckily the door was open, and the light from the street lamp was flooding the living room with its amber light. My brother said that he felt something at his back, but at no point did he turn around. As he flicked the last switch, the living room had gone dark, as did the rest of the house. As he stepped out of the door, pulling it close behind him, still holding his food container in one hand, he jogged down the few porch steps. He walked towards the front gate, and our house resides far from the main street, essentially having a large front yard, but no rear garage. As he closed the gap between himself and his friend-laden truck, he kind of smiled and thought things over in his head, mad at himself for spooking out when there was no reason to. He climbed to the driver's side of the truck, putting on his seatbelt, and getting ready to pull out of the parking spot directly in front of the house, when one of his friends had asked, Hey, wait, what about your brother? Isn't he coming with us? My brother had answered, What do you mean? He went to work early tonight. He is already gone. Do you see his car anywhere? The very next question that they asked, So, who was walking behind you when you were leaving the house then? I was living in a house in Laguna Beach that had been there since the 1920s, and in its history, it had been a speakeasy, a brothel, and a house for smuggling illegal immigrants. One day, my new wife and I were having an argument. I can't even recall what it was about. She walked down the block to get a cup of coffee and cool off, and I was alone in the house. The way the place was built was incredibly haphazard. There was a bedroom and living room on one side, then a bathroom with two entrances. On the other side of the bathroom was a hallway that had windows on one side, and two bedrooms on the other. From my bedroom, I could look across the hall into the bathroom, then through the bathroom and down to the other hallway. I was standing at my dresser, and I just noticed movement out of the corner of my eye. I looked down there. There was, and honest to God, this gives me goosebumps just typing it. Seventeen years later, a black figure. It was maybe three feet tall, and it was vaguely humanoid. It looked like black scribbles, like someone had scribbled a human shape, but the scribbled had moved, like electricity arching. That's the best way that I can describe it. There was no sound that I could remember. I distinctly remember when I saw it that I wasn't afraid. Just like, what the fuck is that? Then it noticed me looking at it. I can't say that it turned around. It just focused on me, I guess. Then I was scared. I didn't move. I didn't scream. Nothing. I was just frozen. Because it just came at me. It rushed down the hall towards me. I have no idea what it intended. But as soon as it entered the bathroom, the door closest to me just slammed shut on it. I screamed. I yelled for my wife, but she wasn't home. I went outside, into the daylight, and I didn't go back in until she had got home about ten minutes later. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't think I saw something supernatural. But I do know that I saw something. I just don't know what it was. The houses were built to house the people building the railway in Derby in the 1800s. 
I had only found this out after I had left the house, thankfully. It was a creepy house, really foreboding, and every time I washed my hair in the shower, every time I opened up my eyes, I expected something to be there. Anyways, I came back from an afternoon lecture one afternoon, opened up the door, walked up the first flight of stairs, and saw a wet handprint on the floor. A really wet handprint. I was a bit like, hmm, very strange at that moment, but I didn't freak out. It was just out of the ordinary. So I walked up to see my housemate, Ed. I opened up the door, and he was on the phone to his girlfriend, not crying, but massively in distress. That was when the penny dropped. He had told me that he was walking up the stairs earlier, carrying a glass of water. He felt something cold go up through him, almost like a push, causing him to drop the water. He picked up the glass and ran upstairs to his room. The water falling out of the glass had created a handprint on the floor. Literally a handprint. Every digit was a proportion. I did freak out at that moment, as I'd put two and two together. I told everyone to get out of the house, which we did, but then sheepishly returned after our FIFA session around another friend's house. It was genuinely terrifying. It might not sound like it, but it was, and it was all true. Someone had offered me 50 bucks to go back and spend the night there by myself. Despite the fact that I lived there for a year with almost no incident, I wouldn't. There was something there that didn't want six college guys there. Unfortunately, I don't have a photo of the handprint. This was in 2012, prior to the culture of taking a photo or selfie of literally everything. I wish that I had, though, just so that I would have the proof. I was babysitting my niece once while I was staying at my brother's place and they had the baby camera set up so that I could see her on the little TV that it came with. I was studying and starting to doze off when I heard some whispering and realizing that it was coming from the monitor. I initially thought that it was some feedback or something, but then I looked at the TV. There was a dark shadow near my niece's crib. I've never been more terrified in my life, but the shadow was clearly there where it had not been before. I ran to my niece's room, looked around, but I saw nothing but I took her, and I got the hell out of there. I went back to the TV, and the shadow was clearly gone. I told my brother what happened, and he pulled me aside, and told me not to mention it to my sister-in-law, because she'll freak out, but that she had seen that same thing several times now, with the same whispering. They stayed in that house for about four more years, and when my niece was just learning to talk, she would tell her mom about her special friend. To this day, it scares the shit out of me. When they moved out, my brother had told me that my niece had become sad because she would miss her friend. Her mom would tell her that she would bring him along. But all my niece would say was that he couldn't leave that house. We never to this day told her about that damn shadow, and she apparently never saw it herself. My family traveled to the south of France to stay in a cottage owned by someone my dad had worked with. The owners would visit occasionally. But this summer it was free, and we had ten days booked in there. After a long two days on the road, we drove down a steep driveway towards a secluded mill cottage, where the water wheel sat, static alongside the stone house. There was a deep cellar, with some stairs down under the wheel next to the house, and a small river circled the place. We went into the house, chose the rooms, but not being set down in a small cot. The house was draft and cold from the lack of use. We settled in and turned all of the heating on, yet the house had remained cold and felt damp. The first night we had set a fire in the living room and listened to a couple of audiobooks before my sister and I had gone to sleep. My parents stayed up a little bit longer, then they went to bed. Around midnight they both woke up at exactly the same time, and the door to the bedroom was open slightly. At first they thought that it was my sister, until they saw a large dark silhouette of a man framed in the doorway standing stock still, just looking at their direction, as if appraising them. After a short period, the shape turned, and then started to move, as if satisfied, and then disappeared. They looked at each other, but didn't speak, and both went back to sleep. The very next morning, the house had felt warm and dry, and sunlight was back through the windows, as if something had lifted and accepted them. They spoke the next day, and both agreed that although they were skeptics, it could not have been anything other than something supernatural in that doorway, 
deciding their worth. One night, when I was maybe 10 or 12, I had trouble falling asleep. My bedroom was the entire top floor of our house, with my bed and such being on the left side, and storage closets and a play area being on the right. I was lying in bed when I had heard a noise from the other side of the room, and I would see my rocking chair being rocked. It was sitting just outside one of the storage closet doors. It proceeds to rock its way halfway across the room, and stops dead under the ceiling light. At this point I was freaking out, and I just buried my head under my blankets, and never peeked out again until morning. It was all confirmed to not be a dream, as the rocking horse was still in the middle of the room when I had woken up. Furthermore, I got a stern reprimand from my parents for being up out of bed playing with my toys well past my bedtime. Their bedroom was directly below the storage closet, or play area, and had heard the creaking of the rocking horse shuffling across my room. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos, and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.